This is Karen from stampyourway.blogspot.com, your Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I'm going to show you today how to make these really cool potion type bottles for your Halloween decor around your house. Um, now I know, I realize that they do sell in stores around this time of year. Uh, Self-adhesive, just pre-made sticky labels, such as this one. However, as you can see, this label is quite large. And it's fine, well, almost fine. It's actually the existing bottle's label is peeking out here at the top and the bottom and not exactly evenly. But it, it at least fits this bottle a little bit better because it's this happens to be a tall bottle and the width of the bottle is more consistent. But I found that most of these labels that you buy in the stores, they don't fit my bottles. And I'm just trying to use up whatever um, bottles, recycle them, that you know I may happen to have. And so today I'm going to show you, if you want to make labels for some bottles, recycle them, turn them into decorations, how you can do so. And let's get started. Now here's how I made this first potion bottle. I want to first show you in the 2013 Stampin' Up! catalog on page 22. This is where I got my inspiration. As you can see, there's just a couple cards here, but it's the color scheme that I am just loving for this Halloween. This gumball green and black color combo, I think is just truly awesome together. And that's why, as you can see, for this potion bottle, I wanted to replicate that. I've got some green uh, potion in here and then my black label and I'll show you how I did that. This one was very simple. Uh, first I just basically grabbed a, a piece of paper from a DSP paper from the Witches Brew cardstock pack and over here this cutout is where this label was and I basically just cut it out right below these little dotted lines and just to the right of this vertical line and then above these dotted lines here. And, and how I knew that was going to work was I took, and I think a, a basic uh, seamstress tape measure works the best to measure your bottle because it allows you to wrap it around to get you know, a better measurement. Obviously you couldn't do that with a basic ruler. You couldn't wrap that around the bottle. So this, this type of um, measuring device works very well. And what I did was, for this particular bottle, and you'll notice with any bottle that you may, you know, decide to use, they're not always consistent with the width or the thickness of the bottle. Within this section, it's pretty much the same and above that there's like a little groove and then this bottle starts to taper down and at the very bottom here there's a little groove where it might actually I think this bottle actually feels like it bellows out just a little bit so when you're you know selecting your bottles the first thing you want to do is measure that consistent area of the bottle to determine how big your label needs to be because you don't want it your label to go over that um, consistent area because where it starts to taper down your bot your label isn't going to lay flat on your bottle and it, it would look all bunchy and and it, it wouldn't look right and the same thing down here this bottle has that groove you try to put the label over label over the groove and it's going to not going to lay really flat for you so what I did was I measured this area from this groove to this groove maybe just a little inside so that you know I have some uh, space between you know, uh, where I'd want the label to be and that groove and come up with a measurement. And then, you know, of course you have some room for your um, width measurement, like how far it's going to wrap around your bottle. Basically, you could do something that wraps all the way around, but, you know, unless you're going to be displaying your bottle in an area of your home where you can see all sides, it really isn't necessary. And it, it, it just takes more paper. And it's also more difficult to adhere it because you're trying to wrap a bigger piece all the way around. So I pretty much just uh, stuck with a standard type label, 
that the manufacturers probably would have put on this glass bottle when they were filling it for with their product. Most labels only go in the front anyhow. So when I measured this bottle, this particular one, I came up with these measurements. Uh, this, my bottle allowed me to uh, cut a piece of cardstock that was three and five eighths inch wide and that's a good wrap around and then the height is three and a half inches tall so I knew that that would work right and then those measurements and so then I took a look at this sheet and I measured all of these and which one and this one was really great because it actually you know the saying matches to what it's tr it's supposed to be it's supposed to be uh, a spooky Halloween type potion bottle and it says quench your thirst with intoxicating elixirs, poisoned potions, bubbling brews. I mean, how perfect can you get? So, and it also happened to be the right measurement for that cutout. And so I cut that out. And then on the back side of the cardstock, I just adhered it with um, some adhesive. I would highly recommend a very strong adhesive, uh, such as um, your sticky strip because otherwise if you just use your basic um, adhesive or even glue dots they won't stay stuck to the bottle you'll find that you might get it stuck but as your bottle's sitting out for a while throughout the holiday month your labels might start lifting off i know this from experience it happened to me last year <laughs> so take my advice use a very strong adhesive and then your label will stay on um, nice and tight to your bottle so that's that first that's the first potion bottle that I created. Oh, and also to come up with this green color, this is basically just water. Water filled in the bottle, and I used um, some basic uh, food color type bottles that you can pick up in your local grocer. And this particular one is a neon variety, and I used this shade of green, which as you can see, I mean, it's not so neon that it's fluorescent. It's just a very intense green, very pretty. And I also would recommend when you put your food coloring in, uh, put the several drops of food coloring in the bottle first when it's empty, and then add your water, because as you add your water, it's naturally gonna uh, mix and dilute and, and stir that food coloring around to get this perfect uniform shade throughout your bottle. And also, a good funnel. Now for this bottle, it's exactly the same type of bottle, and I didn't mention before, but originally this just had tomato sauce in it. Poured it out, uh, when the, well, once the tomato sauce was all gone, I rinsed it out very well, popped the glass jar, a bottle, and lid, both, in the dishwasher. Comes out beautifully clean. Of course, you also, if there was the label that was uh, originally on the bottle, I had to remove that. You get any sticky, um, a best way to do that, to get rid of that sticky residue from the previous glue of the manufacturer's label, is just soak for, I don't know, 30 minutes or so in hot water, a sink filled with hot water and maybe a little bit of dish soap. Let it soak for a little bit, then your label should peel off and then any leftover glue, usually that hot water will melt it down enough where you could just take one of your plastic uh, dish scrubbies and it'll rub right off the rest of that glue residue. And then, um, you know, like it just makes it a lot easier to get it off. If, if you have any stubborn, stubborn adhesive, from the manufacturer then the next best thing would probably be your goo gone you rub that on it'll take it right off and then like I said pop it in your dishwasher and it's ready to go this particular one I used um, for to get that color that's sort of like a blood red color I used um, my red food coloring some several drops of that I'd say about oh 90 percent red however number of drops you decide to put in. I used about 90% red and then I'd add just like a, a drop or two I think maybe I end up putting maybe three or four tops of this purple from the neon pack and that's this you know blood red type color that I came up with all right now to decorate the bottle for this one I decided to use this particular um, designer series paper from that same Witch's Brew um, designer series pack. Multiple uses, great economy for the number of craft projects you can get out of that uh, particular paper pack. And I knew from my previous bottle, I knew what my measurements needed to be for my label. So then I went looking and I found this paper in the pack and I thought, look at these rows of spiders and wouldn't that be great 
for as a border for my label. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to add the white embossing powder. See that? And I think I might actually want to repeat that pattern. I think that would be kind of neat to add a couple more skulls so that they're repeating just like the spiders are. So I'm going to add a couple more st stamps with the Versamark ink. One there. And one right next to it over here. the white embossing powder. And I can brush this off into my bowl and see that. And I've got probably a little bit of powder on this paper too. I'll not save that too. Okay, so now I'm going to blast this with the heat tool. Now I've used other type heat tools and I can tell you that this one is by far the Cadillac model. It is so, and, and without the Cadillac price, really. It, it does such a great job. It's not so loud. It has two speeds, low and high, which I'm going to bump it up to high now. And you want to run that along there just until you see those skulls get nice and white and shiny. Oh, see it's starting to turn. There we go. As soon as you see it turn, you just keep moving. Okay. So here are my finished potion bottles. As you can see in the center, I created one more bottle. And for this one, I used more of the paper from the Design Witches Brew Designer Series paper pack. I also punched, I also stamped an image using the Halloween Bash stamp set and embossed it in black this time, just like I did these skulls, only this time I did it in black, punched it out using the scalped oval punch, then adhered the uh, punched image to the label and then the label, of course, to the bottle. And so as you can see, just another great use for the Witches Brew cardstock. And for more detailed instructions, photos, and shopping lists, check out my blog at stampyourway.blogspot.com. And until next time, happy haunting!